Okay, welcome to what is going to be a demonstration video here of doing a hard surface model inside of Maya. I am uh, going to be working here inside of Maya 2020. And uh, the idea here is to prepare something. I'm gonna be using a technique um, that I've heard referred to as mid poly. So I'm not gonna be working on high poly or low poly uh, or you know uh, some kind of variation of them, but uh, somewhere down the middle. So I'm gonna be worrying more about shape as I model, as opposed to worrying about topology as you would in a low poly. Um, and I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to be worrying about making it an incredibly accurately detailed as you would a high poly. So I'm going to aim somewhere down the middle. The idea is that uh, I aim down the middle and at some point I will then be able to split this model into two. I'm going to make a copy of it and uh, that copy will become the high poly and the original one will become the low poly. So the weapon that I'm going to be doing is a... Um, a TT33. Uh, I've gone and uh, sourced a few uh, a few things here in order to uh, make my life a little bit simpler. I've got blueprints and I've got some reference materials here as well. So just spend some time on Google taking a look at, uh, at images of this thing. So one of the things that I was very interested in while uh, sourcing these things were some of the more unique views of this. So I really like the back view here where I can see where the slide ends and that kind of rail um, upon which the slide is locked when it comes to the uh, the rest of the receiver. Uh, I've got the blueprints. I've got some technical drawings as well. Now these are nice because they show me all of the different components. And so while it isn't uh, uh, really easy to kind of see what's going on here, at least I can see where things are cut away, where the holes are, um, as that'll become pretty uh, important along the way. And I've actually got two of those. Here's the other here. Uh, and then I've just got some other images of this thing. Um, you know, this one's from the front. And I can see the kind of stepping that goes down into the barrel. Uh, I can even see the rifling in the barrel, which is going to be important. And then if I move forward here, again, a little bit of a deconstructed view here. The slide has been removed. Um, and this is one of the things that in, in this weapon in particular, I've been a little confused as to how this works, um, is that you can see the slide actually also incorporates a little bit of the lower bottom section here. And I couldn't figure out when the slide moves, how those two things fit together. Um, at some point, it may be in my best interest here to go take a look at a video of maybe somebody reloading one of these things or what have you. Um, but that's the idea, uh, is to go in, in and source as much of this stuff out as I can. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here in order to make my life a little bit simpler um, is that I'm going to go and split my blueprints up. Uh, right now, they are all in a singular file here. Um, and to make my life simpler when I model, uh, I might go... Uh, split these things up into separate images. The uh, the other option you have is to just keep them uh, united and uh, and brought into Maya like this, um, which I mean is going to be faster. And if you have the ability to uh, to just ignore you know some of what it is that you're looking at, uh, then this is uh, an easy thing to do as well. So let's let's jump in here and see what we're going to do now. While I am going to model the entirety of this asset in this video, uh, I'm also not going to be doing it all real time. So at some point I will increase speed here in the video um, as some of the techniques kind of uh are, are identical so here we have Maya uh, I'm in my perspective camera I'm going to hit space bar to jump into my four viewports and uh, I will begin with the top so I'm going to jump into the top I'm going to go to view image plane and I will import a reference image and so I will go browse to the folder that I currently have saved and I'm just over here reference images uh, and then these are the images that I've got here uh, I will grab my blueprint image and I will open it Maya will go place this inside of here. Now, I've already made changes to this blueprint. I should probably go in uh, and come clean about this as well. Uh, I have made changes to the blueprint, and the changes that I've made uh, are actually inverting it. Uh, I do find it a little bit easier when I'm working on white on black than, uh, than working on a white image with a black line drawing. I can sometimes lose the geometry when I'm doing that. And so here we have the, uh, here we have the, the weapon. I know I'll plot it out. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rotate this image since I'm looking at the top view in this the top view 
front points upwards and so i'm going to go line up the uh, the center of the gun here i'm looking at the iron sight right there i'm going to go center that with the uh, central line in here and then uh, i will probably use the absolute rear of the weapon um against the uh, the other axis line here now this is not to say that that's where i'm going to want the weapon to be once it's fully modeled um but it gives me a really nice place to put things while i'm organizing this and so that is what i'm going to do here so there is now this if i go to my perspective viewport this is going to be lying on the ground now and uh and that's not actually going to be useful to me and so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to drop it down so when I do that, I'll now be able to see here in the front view uh, or in the perspective view, I'll be able to see the weapon without this plane getting in the way. And I'm going to do this with each of my views. Now moving it down has not affected what's going on in the top view. I'll turn off the grid here and that one's good. We're going to jump into another view. Let's go to side and we'll go in here. We are going to go in viewport, image and import image. I will grab the same file, projects, TT33 reference, blueprint, and I'll pull this in here. And now this is the side view. Now, if I go look at perspective, uh, I can see in relation to uh, the image here, which, which view we're looking at, uh, really this is gonna depend on the left or right. So if I move this to the left, we can see that grid shows up. That's, that's what we're interested in. So it's actually the bottom image here is what I'm interested in. So we're gonna go pull this up and uh, I could do a couple of things here. Uh, I could try and center the barrel um, in that line, but I don't actually have anything on the weapon that will allow for that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the top of the weapon along the grid line. And then just like I did with the top image, I'm gonna use the back of the pistol and I'm gonna line that up with the grid here. Okay, so what that's going to do is it's going to line up those two images. So now whenever anything lines up to the back of the pistol in the top view, it'll line up to the back of the pistol in the side view. So we can move this back like so. I'll go to my front view and I will image plane as well. Again, returning to the same place and grabbing the same reference image. And then this one is the front view. So we're gonna have to go place this here. Now, again, I have to pay attention to where I've placed various things here. So if we go look at the side view, while I did use the top of the slide, you can see that the iron sights stick out above that. And so I need to keep that in mind here as I go and place the image here. So I'll move it up so that my middle mouse button is locked to the up view. And the top of that is actually the curvature here that we're seeing. So I will place that there. And then I need to move it uh, centered along that center line too. So I can just move it in the X axis here. And then if I go move in, I can use my middle mouse button to drag this over and center that as best I can. Now, I do have a rear view here as well, and I'm I'm going to uh, forego using that for now. Uh, I will obviously want to use it at some point when, uh, when I get there, uh, and so I will need to switch the images around, but for now, I'm going to use these three images here in, uh, in this manner. The idea now is to really just jump into uh, to modeling and start, you know, capturing the shape of this object. Now you do want to be careful here. Uh, you'll notice if I just zoom out of these three viewports, it can be really easy to lose track of which image you're supposed to be looking at when you do this. Um, really, this is just an issue for the for the first uh, mesh that you're going to create. You know, once you've got a model in there, that model will indicate which which piece you're looking at. Um, and so I'm going to start with either the slide or the barrel. Uh, the only reason I'm thinking the barrel is the barrel is a pretty simplistic piece. Um, all I need to do to, to determine the barrel is actually go and see you know here's the there's an end cap that goes on this thing um, and I need to figure out where in the end cap uh, the relationship between the barrel and the end cap 
um and so i'm gonna look at that image and i'm gonna look at this image so it looks like the end cap is this piece here and it contains two steps and then the barrel protrudes from there so that is step number one is identifying that there are two two bevels or two steps in the uh the mesh here and then the barrel sticks out so that's the uh that's the good news uh in terms of where that barrel ends i can't really see that here so if i go and look at this image in regards to where the barrel is uh there is a screw hole right here so there's going to be some kind of uh, uh mechanism that joins that to the pistol uh and if i go look at this image uh, we can probably get a better indication as to where that goes. So I, I want to line this up in the right place because when the slide moves, it's going to be integral um, to, to the working mechanism of this thing that, uh, that that is lined up correctly. So it looks like the barrel lines up with uh, this little pin that goes through here. There's a screw right here, uh, which would appear to be it. It looks pretty far back. And I believe it's too high. So that's, I don't think that's it. It looks like it's these guys on the receiver here. So this goes through here. It looks like there's a smaller hole here. So that's going to look for in the, uh, in the image. I'm going to move my reference images over. I'm going to go into my side view here. We're going to maximize this. Uh, and indeed those screw holes are not present on that side. I can see that they're present on this side um, And so that'll be uh, that'll be something I'm just gonna take a look at here. So uh, We've got two steps and it doesn't appear like the barrel is sticking out at all um, On this image, but that's that's all right. We're still gonna make this work. So I'm gonna start off here by creating a cylinder and uh, There there it is there and uh, I'll line up my grid. So this is the image that I'm using here. Um, so I'm going to go and rotate this guy 90 degrees. I'm holding J to rotate that. Um, you're going to notice that we run into a problem here once we get some geometry in here, which is the geometry obscures our reference images. So to fix this, to correct this, I'm going to go to the shading tab and I'm going to go to X-ray. This is going to allow us to see through the geometry back to that reference plane. Now, if I jump back out of here and I jump into this, say, the front view, you'll notice that that didn't do anything to the front view. And that's because these viewport settings are unique to each viewport. So if I have my four viewports up here, you can see that the tab or the menu system is here on each viewport. So each one of these things is going to have its own setup. So I'm going to begin here. And I will slide this to the barrel part forward. I'll line it up with the front of the pistol. I'm going to bring it up here and we are going to scale it down until it matches the little extrusion or the beginning of this thing. Uh, we're going to go to the modeling toolkit and I will take these and bring them backwards. And again, I'm still looking at the, uh, the reference image over on my other screen here in order to make sure that this gets positioned correctly. Now, the idea here is that when the slide moves back, uh, it needs to move back past where the barrel is. That's where um, the ejection, the casing is going to come out. So this hole here that exists in the slide would be above the magazine. It would be back here. And that's where the little shell is going to pop out. So I can probably bring this back to about here and be okay with that. Now, let's check this in a couple other views. So I'm going to go to my Tom view. We're going to go to shading and put this on x-ray so that I can see through it. And you can see that we line up pretty well here. And that's pretty well centered within the pistol. And if we look at the front view, we can see it's pretty close. I'm going to go to shading x-ray and you can see it's actually just a little off here. Now, this might be that the reference plane is off and it might be that the geometry is off. It could be that the drawing on the reference plane is off. Now, in my years of modeling, I've never encountered um, a blueprint that has been completely, completely perfectly accurate. There's always going to be something off with them. And the reason for this is that blueprints are orthographic images. They are um, drawn without perspective and they are just that they are drawn. They are created by an artist and artists are imperfect. And so there is always going to be a level of uh, of um, inaccuracy here in these things. 
And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the, uh, the reference plane for this guy. And I'm just going to move it up a little bit until that does line up. That was just the front reference plane. And if I look at this here now, uh, I can see that it does now line up really well with that circle. You can see the, uh, the radius is the same. So that's what I'm interested in. Now, I, I would also take a guess here that we can see some con concentric circles. Um, and if I were to cycle through the, uh, the reference images, um, those concentric circles are going to, you know, line up with what we're seeing in the, in the barrel here. So, um, this looks like the opening, the smallest of them. And it actually looks like, uh, like maybe the barrel is only supposed to be that wide and that this is maybe one of the steps that we're seeing here. Again, there's a little bit of inconsistency in this and, uh, and I do want to get this right. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to scale this down until it lines up with the, uh, the next image here. Now let's go take a look at what that's done in the other view. So in, in the top view, it's, it's really not gonna change much other than the fact that we're thinner through here. But again, I don't see all the bevels here. Now this could be a different mo model of this weapon. Uh, it can be a different configuration of this weapon, a different barrel. Uh, regardless, I'm going to uh, adhere to what I see. So I'm gonna make a, a judgment call here in order to get this thing correct. So we have that there the next thing that i want to do is uh there's a little bit of um of uh stepping that exists on this so we can see that it's it's really thin as it goes through here um and then that there are two rings of extrusion on here uh and then a third section where it is thicker and that's where that little metal piece comes down now i may not worry about that little metal piece that's what anchors the barrel to the weapon and since this thing won't won't be taken apart I probably don't have to worry about that piece. So I'm going to go and select my edges. I'm going to hit connect. Uh, I'm going to need, let's see, one, two, three, four, five connections. So I'll bring this number up to five and then I'll go to move and uh, we'll start putting these things where they're supposed to go. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to pop into Photoshop here. I've got an idea that uh, that might help me visualize this a little bit better in terms of what we're seeing. So I have the uh, I have the image of the pistol here where it's been taken apart, and uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this layer, and I'll affect its transparency a little bit. We'll bring the transparency down, and all I want to do is I just want to bring the the barrel kind of to where it belongs inside the pistol. So about here, I'll make this even a little bit more transparent. And I just want to see, I want to see how long this is. And in fact, I'm going to duplicate this layer as well. And I'll bring its transparency down. And I'll bring the two of those over here. So it may be a little hard to see, but I've, I've joined, there's a gap right there. And I've joined that back up. So the barrel's in the right place in the receiver and I can see where this thing ends. And in fact, um, we can see where that, where that screw hole lines up right there. And so that's where that little pin is going to go is right in the center above the trigger. And so that gives me a little bit more, uh, a little bit more clarity here. So it's this little hole here. That's the direct center above the trigger. And that's where I'm going to have to uh, connect this. So I'm gonna return back to my uh, my drawing here so I can see what it looks like. And I can now kind of start placing these things based off that. So uh, I know they're going to be forward about here. And I'm going to scale them together until those gaps are a little bit more accurately placed. I'll grab these polygons here and we'll move them forward. Let's do all of this. No, I need it to be about here. So I'm just looking at the uh, the gap here because the gap seems to be about the same as the thickness. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do an extrusion here. We're gonna go uh, thickness and I'm gonna bring this out until about here which looks like it's going to fill that shape. Now, in actuality, it would probably fill the hole that's here, but uh, I'm gonna leave it like this for now. And that looks to be about right to me, so I can say okay with that. 
Uh, and then we need to create the uh, the little round bit that comes down here. Um, now, if I go and draw on my screen, I can actually kind of see how that's, how that's going to work. Um, if I go and take this here, just from what I'm seeing in the image, uh, it looks like this is the shape of that that thing and it looks like it ends about here so it looks like i can actually cut the barrel a little bit short too so that's where that piece is just drawing on my screen here with this little uh tool will give me the ability to kind of see where i need to make that so if i go back into this mode i will take these vertices and we'll bring them back here to about here. I'm gonna need another connection in order to create this shape. So I'll grab all of these edges, I'll hit connect. I'll bring this down to a singular connection, which I'll place in the right area. And then just looking at the thickness of that piece. So here's the, here's the image I'm looking at. I can see how thick it is in relation to that uh, cylinder. So it's actually occupying a, a good chunk of the, uh, the width here. And uh, I'm gonna do that with an extrusion as well. So I'm gonna go into face mode. I'll grab these polygons and I'll hit extrude. And uh, I'm actually just going to hit W without moving the extrusion so that I can move them straight down like so. I'm also going to scale them together so they become flat on the bottom. And I'll line them up, you know, about where I've got that piece. Let's go take a look in perspective and see how we're doing. And indeed, it is starting to look like that barrel piece, which is exactly what I want. A little dot here for my tool, so we'll go and clear that. So yeah, so that's actually looking pretty good. I'm gonna need to round the bottom of this, um, and I actually need to cut it free as well. So um, all of the polygons that live inside of here are gonna disappear. Uh, and I'll do that secondary. I'll do that after I add the curvature here. So I'm gonna go into these edges and we'll grab them. We're gonna go and bevel them and I'm gonna add maybe two segments. I don't wanna to go too crazy with this. And then I'm gonna to go to the fraction and I'll set this out. Again, I just kinda of wanna round across where this screw hole is going to go. And I can do that. So now in perspective, we've got that rounded shape there, which looks correct. Next, we'll go and delete the faces we don't need. I'm gonna try and do something here that, uh, again, I, I do this for the sake of vis visibility, for how well I can read things, um, which is I'm gonna go into object mode. I'm going to go into the attribute editor for my model, and I'm gonna to go to its default material here that it started out with. If I go all the way to the end here, there's a Lambert, and I'm gonna darken that Lambert a little bit. I find that a little bit easier on the eyes. So something like this, this is getting to be uh, pretty close to what I want. Uh, the back of this thing doesn't need to exist. So if I grab this vertex, control and switch, well, we can do this. And then the other thing that I wanna do is these guys need to connect in here. I don't need any of these faces here. So I'm going to go to my multi-cut and I'll start with this vertex and go straight up like so. And then that is going to give me the ability to delete the faces that aren't needed, like so. Now, the only other thing that I want to do here, I'm going to have to uh, remove the inner, inner workings of the barrel as well. I need an inside to the barrel. Uh, I'm going to need to connect these pieces back up. However, the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that this is perfectly linear. So this is where I'm going to go into my front view here. And I can see that it's it's really close. That edge is almost where it needs to be. Um, it just out a little bit. So what I'll do is I'm gonna select this vertex and go to move, and I'll be able to get its position in X, 0.59, which I'll copy. And then we can get out of here. And in perspective, I can grab that vertex and I'll just go and paste and hit enter to move that number over. Now, because I've centered this in the world, I can leave the minus here and put this one in the same place and that should be good. This is gonna give me the ability to remove this edge without any ill effects. And we've got a pretty nice clean looking barrel here. The only thing remaining to do is the actual inside of the barrel. 
So I will grab my polygons. I will go to extrude. I will create an offset and get them to be about the right size. Again, I'm kind of looking at a multiple of different things here. I'm using the inside of the, the barrel here and uh, looking at how thick that makes it here. So that looks like it's going to be okay. I'm going to hit extrude again and go to move and I'll bring this back. This is going to end up being the inside of the barrel. So this can go all the way to the back here. Like so. Now I'm going to grab, I want to get this lined up exactly here. So I'm going to grab a vertex from here and we'll check its position uh, in Z. And then we're going to grab all of these and paste them there to get those two to line up. And then in face mode, I can actually delete that. That's the barrel. So it should be hollow like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start bridging together the, uh, the edges here to close this up. So I'll start with this one bridge. I'll go to the next one. So I'm doing the two extreme sides here and then I can double click the hole, remove the inner workings and bridge as well. Okay, so that's going to give me the back of this thing. Now, in the uh, in the reference image, it's nowhere near um, it's nowhere near that thick. Uh, but we're never going to see these faces inside the mesh here, and so I just want to close this off. Is what I want to do to make sure there's no open holes here. So the next thing I'll do is take these edges and I'll bring them back. I still have that copied in my clipboard so if I go in paste I can get it back to exactly where it should be as well and then what I'll do is I'll go and bridge these together so these two with these two and this one with this one and this one with this one so we'll do a bridge here this is going to allow me to take these two edges and bring them down like so and again i'm going to close this off here it appears as though one of these is off so it looks like one oh no they're both off they're both a little inaccurate not the end of the world i'll have to uh figure out which of those lines is accurate and mesh them up uh you can see i've got another quad here which is nice that we can go bridge across to get rid of the opening that's there <laughs> This edge here is actually going to become of a little use to me and I'll end up removing it. But I'll leave this like this for now and we'll call this the barrel. And so uh, while I'm here, I'm going to go and uh, delete my history and I'm going to go give this a name. So this is going to be barrel underscore low. I'm already starting to implement my substance painter naming convention so that when I get there, everything is already set to go. Now I have done this two ways in the past. I've done this where I just call it barrel. And once I make a duplicate, I would name one high, one low. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to name it low and the duplicates I will name high. Okay, so with that piece complete, I can move on to modeling something else. Uh, I may want to do the uh, the cap that lives on the front uh, or the slide. Really, there's no there's no rhyme or reason for uh, for any of them going first at this point. Uh, just a matter of trying to uh, ensure that I get that shape as clean as I can. So maybe what I'll do, maybe let's work on the receiver here, the main body um, of the weapon, and that'll give us a little bit of a. Uh, uh, piece upon which we can mount everything. So I'm going to return to my side view. Now looking at this piece in the schematics, I can see that it is incredibly flush. Okay, so the entire side of this thing is flat. It's curved where it goes around the grip and the grips, the actual grip plates go over top of this thing. Um, they are going to be separate pieces. I'm going to model them separate. Uh, we can see the trigger guard as well. I would need to see if the trigger guard is flush. And it does not appear to be. It looks like the trigger guard actually comes in slightly. So uh, I can see that thickness here. It steps in with a bevel and then the trigger guard goes out. So that's going to be important as well. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by making this complete face, this side. Okay, so we'll move this back over. I can see that full side here. So I'm going to go and deselect my barrel. You can see it almost goes invisible for me here, which is really nice. And I'm going to begin with a plane. I'm going to go rotate, hold J, 
and I will rotate this thing 90 and I'll bring it over here. I'm gonna go into my attributes for this thing. I'm gonna go into uh, plane one and I'm gonna reduce the subdivisions. I really only need one. Okay, so the idea now is to line this up with that thickness, that plate. So it's gonna go here. I'll grab these vertices and bring them down so that they line up. Now I'm going to need to make sure that when I place these in uh, in height here, that that number is exactly where the slide goes. They need to be right against each other. Um, in fact, there may be a little bit of a gap there, but it's it's gotta be pretty tight in order to make sure that the, uh, the object looks like it's solid. And so I'll start with this here. Now again, I'm working on, on a mid poly, so I'm not gonna worry about keeping things quadded or anything like that. I'm gonna work only on just trying to capture the shape. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna hold shift and extrude this. I'll grab this vertex and bring it down. Now I'm gonna need an extra edge in here or something in order to, uh, to capture that curvature a little bit more accurately. Uh, but for now, I just want to kind of get, again, close enough. I can also see that the uh, the blueprint appears to wobble a little bit. So if I go and scale these just to make sure that they are perfectly linear, you can see that it looks like the, uh, the blueprint does not line up exactly the way it should. Not the end of the world. At this point, I'm going to use this as merely a suggestion as to where these pieces go. So I've gone and extruded out past here. Again, like I said, we're gonna to wanna to put another connection in here. If I go to vertices, I can take that and bring it up. And that's what's gonna give us the curvature there. We're gonna go over here. I'm gonna go back into edge mode because that's gonna allow me to extrude this again. And again, I'll bring this right back to the end of the pistol. I'll bring this in a little bit. I will want another edge in there as well, but for now, this is good. I'll take this edge and I'm gonna bring it down. And this is gonna to have to follow the trigger guard all the way through here. And it's gonna to have to follow this line all the way through here. So that extra thickness you see, that is the bevel and in, in how round it's going. So I'm going to start positioning these a little bit here. I'm gonna bring this one. I'm looking at this curvature right here. So this is curving backwards. And as soon as it changes and goes forwards, that's where I'm going to place this. So about here, and I'll bring this edge in, and I'll bring this edge in, and I'm going to leave those just like that for now. Again, I know they're not perfect, but I just need to get them close. I'll hold shift and I'll bring this down to the bottom of that portion. I'm going to pull it back, and I'm lining up this vertex over here. In vertices, I'll line up this vertex. And now I can go and add some more segments to this to clean it up. So I'm gonna go through here, I'll hit cut, and maybe we'll add three segments in here. In vertex mode, I will bring those back to line them up with the curvature of the finger guard. I will bring these ones back and I think I need one more connection through here. These are okay in terms of how much I'm, I'm appropriating or uh, approximating that curvature, but this one is a little too far off. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect it just with a single edge. I'm gonna go to move and I'll grab these vertices and I'll pull them back. And that's a little closer. In fact, I could probably move the two of them up and just get a, even a little closer to that shape. Like so. Okay, so that follows it really nice and cleanly. I'm gonna need to do something around the uh, the hole here. Again, we're gonna end up with a bolt here. This is probably the push button for the magazine release. And so I'm gonna need to make sure that that's pretty accurate. You can see that uh, we end up leaving the curvature quite a bit down here too. So that means I'm gonna need to put a few segments down here. Let's start with four. Now, I don't wanna go hog wild when I add these things and I wanna just add what is absolutely needed. So I start with these things spaced fairly far apart 
and I'll only go and add more in if I so need to. So I take a look at this. We're actually gonna bring this one down and I can see that just with four edges, I can actually keep the entire rear section of this on that line. And it isn't until I get down to the grip here that it actually takes a step forward. So that means that I can leave these guys here and we'll go place them in the correct position. I'll pull this one back. So this is probably here where I want to do this. I can see there's a little bit of a negative curve here. Um, but for the most part, if I were to remove these things, that would kind of be the end of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring these down to here. Okay, I'll put that one on the edge. I'll put this one on the edge. Now what that should do is it should actually negate the need for these two edges. So if I remove them, nothing should change. And that's because again, we're not getting any shape change in between those two segments. So I'll bring that down. Uh, we're still right on model here. So this is actually following that straight edge really cleanly, but at the back, we've got some curvature. So I'm gonna go and add two edges back here. I'll go to move vertices and we'll slide those. So back onto that edge and back onto that edge. Next, we can go and start adjusting the curvature as we go around here. So I'm going to go in first at an edge, make sure I have these both selected. And uh, let's start with a single edge first. That single edge is going to be important because it's going to be the differentiation between the right curve here and the left curve here. I'll pop in here and I'll add maybe three. And then I'll go and slide those forward. So we're going to try and make sure that they help capture this curvature here. So out there, out there, and out there. And then it looks like I might be able to get away with a singular cut here, which we'll try. And I can go and pull this back. And indeed, that is now holding that shape. So if I go to face mode and I select this, we can see just how accurate to the shape I've got this, which looks pretty close. It's not too bad. Now, because of the way that I modeled this in, in using these extrusions by starting with a plane and extruding out and extruding out and extruding out, this whole thing is quadrilaterals, which means I, I really shouldn't have to make any changes to this. Um, there are some places where I, I might end up having to add more to it. Uh, again, I'm a little off curve here, and since the back of this gun is so completely round, that may be something I need to do, but for the most part, this is pretty good. If I jump out and we go into the front view now, I'm going to take all of the vertices that we just created, and I'm going to pull them out until they line up with the edge here on the side, which is where we know that to be. And indeed, I've gone and moved it the wrong way. So let's do this again. We'll move them this way. To about here. And again, I can actually see that these don't line up anymore. So there, there definitely is something askew with that front image. So we're going to use that with a grain of salt. We're going to be very careful how we use that. Now, the pivot for this is still located in the middle here. So I'm going to run a symmetry modifier. We are indeed going to use X and I'm going to remove the weld because we don't need that to happen. And that is going to create for us the other side of the pistol body. So lovely so far, what I can do now is go and start joining this thing um, in terms of where it goes. So this, this is one of those things that uh, this edge isn't actually going to be in use. Uh, but it will eventually be useful. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with the front and I'll bridge. Okay, so it's going to close that off and I'm going to go to the back and I'm going to close those two as well. So this is just going to remove the, uh, the, the fact that I'm going to create any kind of internal shape to this thing. So I can now go and remove the front and remove that and I should be able to bridge the entire thing. Okay, so there's the beginning of the pistol body. Now, the rubber plastic grip, or the plastic grip that goes here, that's going to live right on top of this. So this is all going to be metal, and that grip's going to be plastic. Um, again, I'm going to have to put a button here for the magazine release. I don't actually have to put a hole here, all right? It, it would be, realistically, there would be a hole there, but I don't need to do that when I'm modeling. So this is pretty good. The only thing that I really have left to do 
is that bevel that exists that's all in here. So let's go and do that. I'm gonna go and grab all these new faces that I have. We're gonna go back into our side view and I can see that I'm not going to need the one at the back. The bevel doesn't exist there. And I know the bevel is going to exist everywhere else. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna begin by extruding and we'll try giving this some local thickness here. So somewhere about here. So I just brought it out until it matches around the finger guard or the trigger guard here where that curvature is. You can see that it falls off in a few other places here. I'm not, I'm not too concerned about that. I'm gonna be able to go and fix that. But the other thing I wanna do while I have this here is I want to narrow it as well. So I can see that the thickness here is doing that. But if I give it some offset now in bringing it inwards, that's going to give me the curvature that goes all the way around. Okay, I'm gonna go back into my side view. I'm pleased with that now. I'm gonna to go to move. And now we just need to line up the bits and pieces that have kind of come off model. So this piece is going to move forward like so. And this is going to come forward. I'm gonna go and scale these so that they are planar. I'm gonna leave these ones for now because I've got to still figure out what's going on with the trigger guard here. I believe there's another extrusion that's going to happen here. Once we get into this region, I'm gonna go and just reposition these a little bit. So I'm gonna bring these up and I'll bring this in. This one can come in. That one's fine. We're gonna start growing outwards now. So I'll take from here and we'll reach out to that last edge. I'm go down here and I'll do the same thing. I'll grab these three edges. They're gonna move forward until they hit that outer edge. And then this guy is also gonna do the same thing, but it's gonna need to go upwards. So we don't actually have a bevel on the bottom. These ones are gonna come inwards until they've match that curve a little bit more. This is gonna come in and in and then I'll just follow the curve here as it flows around the back of the weapon. And then same thing here. I'm gonna to have to bring this back to follow that curvature and then just place these properly on that edge. And there we've gone and built that curvature that's there. So again, I've got to correct the bottom here. The bottom is not, not exactly right. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab a vertex where I know the height is correct. We'll go and copy this number. Okay, and then in my side view, I will grab the bottom vertices. I will scale them so that they are planar and I will paste that number in. There we go. So that's gone and placed it in the right area. I now need to just worry about lining these things up again. And there. Okay, so that means the bottom is now correct. I'm gonna end up needing to hollow out the bottom of the pistol because that's where the magazine is gonna go. Right now, I don't know the shape of the magazine. I don't know how big of a hole to cut or anything like that. So we're gonna leave it for now. And we're not too bad in here. The next thing we need to do is the finger guard and how that's connected. So again, in looking at some of these images, we can see that that finger guard um, comes out from where the bevel ends and follows its shape. And so that's that's gonna make things pretty easy. Uh, if we go and look at the where the finger guard needs to live, we gotta make sure that there's some topology there. So I'm going to go and add another section here, connect. I'm going to scale this thing and I'll move it here. So now I have a polygon where the finger guard begins. Like so, we're going to extrude this. Like so. And then I need to do the same thing in the back here. So from here, here and here. 
I should have three faces selected, which I'll extrude and then move to bring them forward. Again, I'm gonna scale these together. Now, if you notice, I only have a singular face here and I've got three of them through here. So I'm gonna to have to uh, worry about making sure that these things are able to connect because this is gonna curve around and just follow that shape. Um, which is going to be super important. Now, one of the things that I can do is I can take these two edges and move them. Now, the finger guard has got its own bevel, and it's a slightly smaller bevel. And so if I go and bring this around here, we'll slide this one down a little bit. That's going to give me the ability to kind of duplicate that bevel a little bit. Um, which is going to be nice. I'm going to bring this back here again so that I'm following that shape a little bit more. Again, it looks like I might need to put a couple more points in here, but we'll wait and see how that's going to work out. Okay, so that's going to look pretty good. And we're going to go to faces here again. And I will extrude again. Now I'm using this one because it actually is already the right shape. So I'm going to rotate this on, on a 45 or thereabouts, and I'm gonna place it on the mesh here where it perpendicularly crosses that edge. I guess I could probably go in and start shrinking this up here too. So let's move this and this, and we can bring these in and in. Now again, this is not the only two edges I'm gonna place here, obviously. I'm gonna to have to put more, but the idea is that I wanna get the, the main shape going before I do anything else. So we'll do another extrusion. I'll pull this out. I'll rotate it again. Maybe somewhere there. I'll put this here. I'll grab these and I'll bring them back. We'll go and uh, scale these things to make them planar as well. Okay. Not too bad. I'm going to need to put that, again, that second shape on. So it looks like this is actually in the wrong place. So this is the thing that I was trying to see earlier. So that's going to go there. We'll place these in the right place here if I can. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow that edge like that and not worry about the uh, the shape. I do need this to be planar though, so that's that's a little interesting. Okay, so what I need to do is make a cut. Yeah, so I think what I need to do here, I think I'm doing this incorrectly. Uh, this one is fine. It's two edges that I've got here. I'm gonna bring these down. And I'll bring this one down. So I need to bridge these two together, which means putting another edge in here. Um, so I'll do that. Nope, it's like this guy. So I'm gonna insert a single edge here. And again, I'm doing this to just be able to, there we go, I'll delete that, I'll delete those. So I'm doing this to be able to uh, bridge these together. So we're going to go to the holes here, and we'll remove the bottom, and remove the bottom, and that should bridge. Like that, okay. So the issue that I'm having here is one of, uh, of thickness. So the, the bevel that happens uh, on the, the main body continues to bevel into the finger guard. Uh, and that's where things have, uh, have kind of gotten a little away from me here. So that means I need to take these polygons, which go all the way around here. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scale those. And they're going to thin the bevel out a little bit. And the reason I wanna do this is that I wanna place that bevel on the finger guard. So I'm gonna do that. And that's what's going on. Now, I should put another edge in here. Okay. 
Just want to make sure I have this whole thing selected all the way, which I do. So I'm going to add uh, another edge here. Like so. And right now this edge is, is planar. It didn't, uh, it didn't deform the shape of this in any way. Uh, and I actually want it to because that curvature is important. So I'm going to take these ones. And again, I don't need you. Uh, and I probably actually don't need those two. Uh, we'll go to the side view. And I just need this to come back a little bit. So that I'm a little bit more round through here. Okay, and I'll do the same thing here. We'll remove that and those. And this is going to come forward a little bit. Again, kind of improving the curvature that's here. Just a little bit more. There we go. Okay, and then to correct the barrel portion, those ones are going to have to come down. Before I do that, I'm just going to take the mismatched vertices here and slide them backwards again. And then again, I will remove that and this, and I'll pull this down as well to again, add a little bit more curvature here. And that's going to allow me to make sure that the curvature is correct. So this guy here also didn't curve, which he should now. So we're gonna go and pull this in until it matches this one okay so with that extra edge in there now uh, all of this should line up a little bit better so we're gonna move this forward until it's in the right place And again, I'm gonna, I can see places where I'm going to need more edges here, but that's that's neither here nor there at the moment. So this is going to go up. And this is going to go up. As these guys were actually meant to live here. So I think I'm going to end up being able to get rid of that center edge now. I don't think that that's going to actually do anything helpful. So let's, let's make that planar. Pull this in, and we'll pull this in. Okay. This one is now where that thickness comes from. Which is that bevel. So I think I've actually got two different things going on here. Um, which is fine. I'll just have to marry them to make them a little bit better. So this is going to get bridged here. And in my side view, yeah, it looks like I did actually have that correct. This is gonna come out to here. And this one's gonna come down to there. So I've got a mismatch here. This is where things don't line up. So we'll connect that. Okay, but I can go put these back to where they were. One here, one here. And that'll, uh, that'll correct the shape of the bevel on the finger guard to make sure that it's accurate. And then again, this one's gonna have to come down to here. And that's the one that's gonna need to come down. So this, I'm gonna flatten out. And that's the one that actually needs to live on this edge here. So I'm gonna take these ones down for the time being. Okay, so this goes on this edge. Move this forward until that lines up. And the bevel that's in here. Yeah, that's okay. That's gonna live there. 
that's going to live there. It's this edge that I don't actually need. So I'm going to go and connect this here. And we're going to, whoops. We'll go and get rid of that edge. This one. There we go. Uh, and I've got some holes in here now just from the way that I can <laughs> foolishly connect to this. So we'll grab this and this, these two triangles. I'm just going to delete them and I'll bridge the holes in order to close them up like that. Okay, so that gets me that shape a little bit more accurate. Now, the only thing that I need to do uh, now, I've got to go and fix where this has come down too low, where I went and manipulated it uh, to line it up. And so that's a fairly easy thing to do. I'm just going to merge it back in with these vertices here. So if I go and grab their height, negative 4.21, and I take these ones, which are going to, again, make sure they're planar and post that value back in, that'll go and put them back where they belong. And then it's just a matter of placing this vertice. So this one needs to go in the same place height-wise, and then it's gotta come out until it hits that line. So these guys, this is gonna to have to move over here to there. So in order to get that curvature correct, that's gotta go there. Okay, so now it's just a matter of uh, lining these things up which uh, shouldn't be too much of an issue uh, and going in and adding the uh, the additional connections that are needed here. Um, and so, yeah, again, I like where that guy is. And so what we're going to do is we're going to bring this one down to match it. Like so. I'm just going to try and keep these a little bit more linear. Uh, and that's going to give me an extra edge loop to put in here. So if I go and clean these guys up a little bit, So I'll take those guys and I will bring this around back here. And again, it's just a matter of now going and cleaning this up a little bit, follow that edge. So again, you can kind of see the idea here that I'm not, uh, I'm not worrying too much about um, being clean in that it's the shape that matters at this point. So I'm just trying to reproduce what I see and then once we clone this and we have a high poly and a low poly, that's when we can go and start cleaning this up um, to give us the, uh, the geometry that is better going to suit the, uh, the low poly nature of this thing. So I'm gonna go and start bringing some of these things up a little bit to just spread the gap out here a little bit more as that is going to Make these vertices all a little bit more useful to me. Okay. So I'm good with that. We can go and add our, our segments in here now to, uh, to go and finish this shape. So I'll go and add maybe four connections in here. And we can start moving them. Along that trigger guard to finish the shape. Again, you can see where there are many of these things that need to line up here. I'm also using this edge here as a means of preserving that bevel. Um, but once it gets here, it's not actually doing what it's supposed to do. So I'm gonna go to my multi-cut. And if I start with this edge here, I will cut it in the right place. like so there we are and then that's going to be able to move out again so this part of the edge now doesn't do anything like so and uh, all I got to do now is just find out where I left that um, that dimension here in terms of the uh, where it lives in X and so we'll go copy that X and I just need to take these new vertices that were added and go and push them there so if I go and scale them so that they're planar go to move and paste them in place 
again, we end up with that shape exactly where it should be. And the figure guard gets its curvature. Now, I only did that on one side here. I'm going to do a symmetry to, to clean up the other side. So let's go and add the uh, remaining curvature. So I'm going to add two connections in here. Connect two. I will add one connection in here. That one's fine. And then we'll add three or four in here. Again, I can go to my vertices and begin the process of lining this up. Like so. Again, pull this one down. And again, it really doesn't take much to uh, to replicate that curvature. Um, up close, it's going to look really, really funky. However, it's going to be completely accurate. Those guys are okay. We just need to go up here, up here, and up here. So that's really nice and clean. I've got that extra edge there. Now, the top here, so it looks like this thing is flush all the way through. Um, and that's where I need to correct this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale these guys in this, whoop, in this axis. Let's undo that like this and like this. And I'll do that with these two here and here. And again, the reason I'm doing this is that there, there is no bevel on the inside of the trigger, or at least, um, not as thick as what we see everywhere else. And so I'm going to do that. And then the same thing must happen once we hit here. So these are going to end up in the same position here. So if I do that. Almost there. One more. We'll place this guy here. I'm just going to line this one up. And it can stay exactly where it is. So that should give us a really nice trigger figure guard. Which has got the uh, the shape that we wanted. I do have an end gone in here that has been created. And I've got a little bit of a funny shape here that I'm not too happy with. It looks like it's curving the wrong way. Uh, just because of where this node is. And so... Uh, I'm going to take this and put it up in that curvature a little bit more. No, it's got to stay there. So I just want to make sure that I'm getting a positive curve through here and not a negative one. So in perspective, we can take a look at this. And uh, in decent, we're getting most of the way there. I know these faces don't actually exist. They shouldn't be there. Um, and the back, I believe, is pretty flat here as it actually curves and goes around. Again, I'm probably going to put one more edge in here. But that is that. I need to make a hole for the uh, for the trigger. The trigger looks uh, pretty self-explanatory. Again, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to wait on the trigger for now. Or I'm going to wait on the hole, rather. Um, as the... Um, I'm gonna take a look here. Just looking at the shape of the trigger, it's not a uh, it's not just a crescent that comes down, but it actually slides all the way back into the piece. So I can leave that as is. Uh, I need to make the inner workings of this make sense, where this is gonna have some thickness and it's gonna be hollow in there, um, which is going to fit with the uh, the back of this thing. Now there actually is in the back here. There is a, uh, a piece that's missing at the moment. I'm going to go and do a little bit more curvature work here. These are going to come down. So again, I'm just trying to achieve a really nice curvature this way. Okay, that's good. So I just want to make sure it's round from every angle. Um, so what lives in the back here 
uh, is actually, and this is where having a back view is important, is that piece actually has this rail cut into it, which is how the slide, hammer, and back of this pistol all fit together. So that's what I want to go and correct here now. I want to work on that rear component. So to do that, I'm actually going to go, we're going to get out of the object selection here, and I'm going to grab this image, and I'm just going to slide it over again, hoping that these things do line up. I'll turn my grid on to try and center this as well. So I'll place that in the middle, and it looks like it is pretty close. I'm going to select the receiver here again. And again, it does look pretty close, if not off a little bit. I think I'm going to drop it down a little bit. And we're going to go use the geometry here to line this up. So about there. And indeed, that is now starting to give me what looks like the bottom curvature on here. So this face is correct. What I'm going to do is then grab this back plate here. as it appears to go inside the receiver. So we're gonna hold shift and I'm gonna drag that up to here. I will select and add a new edge in here. And we have two more edges that need to be made through these two. Which I'll separate until they line up about there and I'll just delete the extra pieces. Okay, so that's gonna give me that little back plate that's there. Now that does need to go in. So I'm gonna grab all those edges. Let's go full screen here. So I'm gonna grab all those edges and I'm gonna remove the inner ones. So I just have the perimeter and holding shift with move, I'm gonna bring them forward Looks like they only go in about that much. Which is not too bad. And then that's going to need to get bridged across here. So I need to put a new edge in. I'll just go to my multi-cut. Actually, maybe what we'll do, let's do it this way instead. I'll just grab these four edges. Four. And I'll hit connect and scale. Well, let's connect one and make them planar and we'll slide them back here and if I go and grab all of those vertices here so we'll grab those vertices add those to it we'll make sure that that's all planar and I now have the geometry needed to bevel or bridge rather across here which is going to close that off uh, again there is a uh, there is a hole right here which is worth noting um, that that's not in the right place uh, or it's not cleaned up here so I'm gonna I am gonna need to clean that up but the uh, the other thing that I have to do is there actually is a hole for the hammer that goes in here so we're gonna go back into our front view turn off the grid and I can see where that hammer hole needs to get cut out of the whole thing and so that's what's next we're gonna go into our edges here I'll grab those edges i'm going to hit connect and do two we'll go to our scale tool and we'll make them planar so i'm just double clicking and scaling we'll join them and split them and <coughs> excuse me <coughs> Pardon me, right in the microphone. So what I'm gonna do is uh, grab these faces and delete them as there is no need for them to exist. And then uh, and then we can go in and box this off, which is where the hammer is gonna go. So if we take this edge, 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 and this edge, hold shift and bring them in. Actually, not you. Hold shift and bring them in. And that'll close that off. So I'm going to move them further than I know they need to be because I don't know where they need to be. Just so that I can go and copy that Z, that Z axis or Z angle. 
and paste it in. I will then scale this, which should line it up. And then we can go do a little bit of uh, temporary cleaning here. I mean, this is in my mid poly, so I don't really care too much about this, but uh, it will give me a, uh, a little bit of an easier mesh to work with if I get rid of nonsensical geometry here, stuff that isn't required for the shape, doesn't contribute to the shape. Like so. Uh, and then I'll do the same thing here with the bottom. We'll bring these two down. And this one too is gonna come down. And there, that's gonna give us that rail at the back. Uh, again, I still have another edge here, which doesn't have a home as of yet, and it will need one. Um, we're gonna need to create a little bit of thickness with the rail, which I can see now. I'm looking at my, uh, I'm looking at my schematic image here. That's this guy. Okay, so I can see there's a little bit of thickness here, which needs to be created next. And so I'm gonna go grab those edges. I'm going to turn off the target weld here for now. And we'll just go select these all the way through. Try and get all of them. So I'm going to hold shift and scale to bring them in. Like so, I'm going to line them up with this uh, back line here so i'm going to go and find out its position in x i'll go to the edges and we'll remove one side and paste this one which again is going to allow those vertices to weld together uh, and then this edge which actually should not be the entirety you can see this is working really nice with the barrel we've created there we go. So we're going to keep that negative in there because this is the opposing side and that now lines up. Now this actually does need to uh, to then drop in. It needs to create a uh, another uh, shape here. However, I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm going to go and close off some of these other faces here. like so and then same thing here this is going to come down straight down i may even want to just throw a symmetry on this here when i'm done with the idea we'll take these guys so there's my thickness Okay, not too bad. Um, and then again, this is supposed to be hollow all the way back. Again, you can see I'm shifting over to just one side here um, because I'm going to mirror this in a moment. And so what I'm going to do, I need to bring this back. There does need to be an interior to this because when the slide slides back, we may end up seeing that. So I want to make sure that there is some thickness there. And what I might as well do is just slide this all the way to the back here a form kind of a cradle all the way back now i know in the actual uh weapon this stops uh this stops around where the figure guard is and then becomes flat and goes all the way across there uh, and then there's actually a hole in it where the uh where the bullets will come up and go inside the weapon and so i'm gonna leave it like this for now again if i need to cut a, a hole in here because it's visible i will but for now, we can't see anything, so I will leave it. So I'm gonna grab my Z. I'll go back to that edge. I will paste the Z. Like so. And that's gonna line up nicely now. Uh, so I can go and bridge here. And bridge here. And let's see, mesh, fill hole. So I've got a triangle in here, which is not something I've done thus far. Uh, everything's been quanted so far, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter. We're going to go and delete our history, and we'll throw a mirror on this. And again, I'm going to bring that merge threshold right down 
so that it just completes the shape of this thing. I'm gonna do the, uh, the right axes here so that it does actually close things off. And there is now the receiver of this thing. And so you get the idea. This is uh, a lot of rinse and repeat here. Come at this, uh, come to this point. You know, I've got two pieces built, and I need to essentially just continue making the rest of the pieces until the pistol is complete. Uh, now I'm not going to do the entirety of this here in uh, in this video. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bother uh, showing off the entire process of modeling this. At least not in real time. What I'm going to do is I am going to let the video uh, continue recording uh, as I'm about an hour in. And what I'm going to do is I will, in uh, in production here, I will speed this up so that the next time you hear my voice, we should be at a point where I've now got this stuff done. And so, yes, let's do that. We're going to jump ahead here now and we'll get to the point where this thing is done.
Okay, and we're back, and uh, I have completed doing all of the components here that I needed to do. Um, everything else detail-wise that I want to model in this, things like the um, the rails here or the, uh, the little bit of detail that is going to be on the grip uh, in order to give it rigidity or uh, a little bit more of a comfort or what have you, uh, that is going to be done via normal mapping. And so I don't have a need for it on this mesh. Um, I've gone and created all of the components. I think I've got one little more little, um, little disc here I'm going to add. And uh, and there's one more thing that I got to do in order to call this low poly complete. So I'm going to go move this to the front and I'm going to scale it down. And this goes on the lower section here. So we'll scale this thing down like this. And I'll just go and back it up like so. And I'm also going to just give this little edge here a bevel in order to make it look a little cleaner. And there we have it. So let's check out the uh, the mesh here. Um, not too bad. I've still got to put a Picatinny rail on this thing, um, but I'm at 4,522. And in this particular pistol, there's not really a lot of other details that can go into this. You know, I've got all of the, the details that are here. Uh, again, there's another, there's another missing component here that I got to get. Um, this is the magazine release, and uh, there should also be a, uh, a loop that I want to get. So we'll go and scale this thing down, and then move this in. And uh, there's a loop um, that exists on the bottom of the hand, uh, the magazine, that I would want to put in as well. So I'm going to put this in. That's the magazine release. You're going to click that and the mag will pop out. Um, and then, yeah, at the very bottom of the magazine, there is a uh, a little uh, loop here. I don't know if this is meant to be a uh, means for carrying ammunition or anything like that, but uh, I will go make this out of a Taurus, which should be pretty quick and easy to do. Uh, we're going to go move this here. I'm going to go play around with its properties in order to get it uh, just absolutely correct here. So something like that. And I'll scale it back in. Move it down onto the right area. So it's not too bad. Uh, we're going to go and play around with our radii here to try and get this correct. There we go. And then uh, let's see, modeling like this so I can go and place that now in the right spot down here and uh, we will ensure that this is indeed going into the right place and there you have it there so uh, that gives me everything that I need now uh, at this point when I've got everything modeled here I'm going to select the entire object. I'm going to delete its history so that there's no uh, construction history on this. I can go and delete my reference images as I don't need them anymore. We'll go zoom in on this here and I'm going to make sure everything is named. So barrel low, body low, mag low, slide low, hammer low, slide low too. So this is actually the rear iron sight, rear sight. I'm gonna make sure my naming is correct. We've got the front sight. Grips trigger. Side clip low. I could actually find the proper names for these things if I so choose, but uh, in this case, I'm not too worried about them. So these are uh, side screws, low. I didn't like that. Side screws, underscore low, there we are. Slide catch. Front plate. Front 
Hunt Bolt. Mag release. And then finally, the mag clip. And there, all of those things are now properly named. And so I can go and save this out. We're gonna, again, remove our history. I'm gonna go into, uh, let's see, edit and, or sorry, modify. We're gonna freeze our transformations and delete our history. And now that everything's named and, uh, and everything's good to go, like so, um, that's it. Uh, we can now, you know, worry more about doing the splitting and doing the high poly. So I'm going to do that in the next video. We're going to leave this here as is. Again, not completely clean, not exactly the way I would like it to be uh, as a final product, um, but it is. It is the shape of this. This is what I call my mid poly. Um, and so the next step is going to be taking this to a uh, a completed. Um, uh, high poly state and uh, cloning this so that we keep our low polys here intact and so there i hope that's been helpful and uh and that you've been able to kind of see here the process again i've got uh, i've got n-gons all over the place on this it's not completely clean um but it is the shape and that's all i'm after at this stage in the next stage we'll go and take this into a high poly